All right, we're back in session to continue with the meeting at 9.07 p.m. Next on the agenda is item number 10, ordinance to adopt. Ordinance 01806, ordinance establishing requirements for independent recreation organizations to receive funding from the Township of Rockaway. Mr. Councilmember Sackett, would you like to um, move this ordinance? Yes, I make a motion and move the adoption of this ordinance. Second. Uh, seconded by Council Member Kelly. Um, this uh, ordinance, because it's up for adoption, requires an open public portion. Um, before we open this to the public, Mr. Sack, is there anything you'd like to say about this ordinance? Um, I just want to say that I worked with uh, 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 Mr. Brewer and uh, the town attorney and, and Lisa on it. I also worked with the Citizen Recreation Committee and went through it. And, um, and we uh, worked out any kinks we had with it and, uh, and we're ready to move forward with it. Okay. Uh, if there's any public input on this at this time, if you would please approach the microphone and state your name and address for the record. Please state your name and address for the record. Pat Dignan, 88 Valley View Drive. From, um, I printed up the ordinance at home so I could read it. From what I'm reading, does this mean that prior to passing this ordinance, individual organizations received money from the township to do different recreation programs so so council member second so the different council member second we'll take questions okay. after is that is that the only question you have that is the only question. all right thank you is there anybody else who'd like to make public comment seeing none is now posed to the public mr sackett would you like to answer that question so different uh, different organizations were always receiving money. Um, there wasn't a lot of uh, it seemed like there wasn't a lot of information where the taxpayers' money was going. Um, now with the ordinance, be a little more transparent where each and every one dollar is going for every sport. They'll be required to submit in details their budget. They'll be some, uh, required to submit the different members of their um, organizations. And uh, we'll be able to see if we're spending $110 in soccer for uniform, we'll have to see where that $110 goes. Are there any other comments or questions by Councilman McKellen? I do, and it's uh, Mr. Sackett, just to reiterate and uh, notify the public. Mr. Sackett, that this ordinance by no means is it reducing any amount of money in any of the sport program budgets. That's always been a concern with some of the members in the public as well as the ones that participate, as well as the rec. Um, and, and I know the answer to that. I just wanted it so that you can reassure uh, all the members in the public um, that there is no money that's going to be removed, reduced, taken away uh, from those organizations. Correct, absolutely not. And we'll, we'll be able to, to see, just in case maybe organizations may need more money. We don't, we don't really know. So uh, nothing, will be, uh, nothing will be taken away. Great, thank you. That's all I have. Are there any other comments? So in summary, the purpose of this ordinance is to improve the transparency into the money spent by the township on recreation programs. And that's it. Yes. Clerk, please call the roll. Council member Yes. Council member Yes. Council member Yes. 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 Vice yes. President Yes. Yes. I count nine yes, zero no, zero abstentions. Ordinance passed. Thank you. <coughs> Next on the agenda is item number 11. Uh, ordinances to introduce. There are two ordinances to introduce. First is A018. 11, an ordinance of the Township of Rockaway in the County of Morris, New Jersey, providing for various capital improvements for the Township of Rockaway and appropriating 2529000 thereof uh, and providing for the issuance of 
$1,834,550 in general improvement bonds or notes of the Township of Rockaway to finance the same. Uh, would anyone like to move this ordinance? So, moved by Councilman Puzio. Is there a second? Seconded by Councilmember Friedlander. Uh, is there any discussion on this ordinance? Hearing none, clerk, please call the roll. Yes. 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 Account nine yeses, zero noes, zero abstentions. Ordinance is introduced. Eleven B ordinance O eighteen. 12, an ordinance of the Township of Rockway in the County of Morris, New Jersey, providing for various water utility improvements for the Township of Rockway and appropriating $585,000 thereof and providing for the issuance of $555,750 in general improvement bonds or notes of the Township of Rockway to finance the same. Uh, would anyone like to move this ordinance? I'll move it. Second. Uh, Moved by Councilmember Colombo, seconded by Councilmember Sackett. Uh, is there any discussion on this ordinance? Hearing none, uh, clerk, please call the roll. Yes. 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 Account nine yes, zero no, zero abstentions. Ordinance is introduced. Next on the agenda is item number 12, consent agenda. We have resolutions R1890 through R1896, uh, labeled A through G. We have no firefighters and no junior firemen's auxiliary to be appointed. Uh, Generally, when we have consent agenda, it's moved uh, and seconded without any discussion. But we have two resolutions, uh, 90 and 91, that are uh, with regard to the audit. There's discussion at our last meeting with regard to this. Uh, the auditor was here. He discussed them and answered some questions, as did the CFO. And I would just ask the CFO to, again, re remind us about these two resolutions. Sure. Um, resolution 1890 is the governing body certifying the annual audit. You're certifying that you have read at a minimum the comments and recommendation section of the audit, which occurs on the last um, six pages of the audit. They're labeled pages 8 through 13. The second resolution, 1891, is the corrective action plan. There are um, two recommendations in the audit. They are listed again in those same pages, and the um, the action that will be taken to rectify those recommendations moving forward. Okay. And my understanding also is following the um, following the uh, if if this resolution passes, there will also be a sign a sheet that every one of the council members here will sign that will get passed around immediately following that. Are there any questions with regard to resolution ninety? And resolution 91. Hearing none. Okay. Uh, would anyone like to move the entire consent agenda? Second. Uh, moved by Abrahamson, seconded by Puzio. Clerk, please call the roll. Yes. Yes. Councilmember Yes. Councilmember Smith. Yes. Councilmember Sackett. Yes. Councilmember Kelly. Yes. Vice President Abramson. Yes. President Jenny. Yes. Account nine yes votes, zero no votes, zero abstentions. The consent agenda is passed. Uh, before we get to new business, I have some old business. Uh, the IT committee, I see one member of the IT committee here. If there's anyone else who's here, please, I apologize for uh, not seeing you. 
The, uh, the chair of the IT committee, Tom Brennan, was at, here at a previous meeting earlier this year, spoke to uh, this governing body about uh, uh, an analysis that they did with regard to enabling uh, video and audio recording of these meetings, as well as other meetings that take place in this uh, council chamber, which includes the planning board and the zoning board of adjustment. Uh, the committee had three quotes uh, for that. And this governing body, as part, of the, as part of the budget process, did set aside funds within the budget, within IT, for that project to move forward. So I wanted to thank the IT committee for uh, putting that together. Uh, and I look forward to the administration acting on those funds uh, to implement video recording. We have two members of the public here today in the back recording video. The video doesn't always have audio to go with it. And frankly, in, in 2018, I think many of us can agree, uh, this is something that this governing body, this township should simply do, uh, record the video, record the audio together with it and have that available to the public. Uh, so again, we look forward to the administration taking action on those quotes uh, and making that happen. Uh, second, uh, we had discussion following the budget adoption last meeting about the adopted budget going up on the transparency page. Uh, I looked at the transparency page recently and saw that the state form of the budget is there, uh, but the details of the budget are not there. Only the request, the, de the details of the request is there, but not what was actually adopted. I've seen a lot of comments and had people ask questions about what is different in the budget passed as opposed, uh, adopted as opposed to what was requested. Uh, and uh, I, my understanding as, after our last meeting was that that the budget details would be updated to show that adopted column rather than being blank but actually having the adopted numbers. Um, Mr. Mayor, do, is there anything that would prevent that from moving forward? No, I'll look at it. Does that mean that the... I'll we can, it see, see, uh, it'll happen? I'll, I'll let you know. We, we've been proposing for five years, right? So I see the details. So the request for this year, what you submitted to the council is posted, right? There's a column at the far end that says adopted, which is blank. Now we have, because the budget's been passed, we have those numbers now. Okay. So I'm simply what asking, you saying, you to fill in those numbers? just update. I believe the, the, the CFO has those numbers in a You just need to update the document. Yeah, I thought that that's it. It seems like that's it. It's, it's updated, hearing. I just need direction to put it up on the website. Yes. So it will go up on the website, yes. Mr. Mayor? Thank you. I look forward to seeing I'm glad that we've got it clarified. So I look forward to seeing that posted on the transparency page so that if anyone is wondering what is different in the budget adopted as opposed to what was presented to the council, uh, hopefully sometime this week or next you'll be able to go online and see that from the comfort of your home. <coughs> Uh, is there any new business that anyone has? Council Member Kelly. Uh, I do. I don't know if anybody would like to go before me since I've spoken enough beforehand. Council Member Kelly, you're recognized. Thank you. Um, this is something to deal with recreation. Uh, so, Mr. Spader, maybe this is something that you could uh, participate in as well. Recently, I put a, um, a, a request for promix for the infield for the baseball fields that are there. Right now what we have uh, in reserves are, like I had said at one of the last meetings, about eight to 10 ton max. We have a lot of the fields that are in, in disarray. Working in conjunction now with the POA, trying to get something to move um, to help out the uh, White Metal Lake field over there, the AMC field. But when I had called up PTAC uh, Key Corp, uh, up in Great Meadows, we have an order for 50 ton of material. And that's roughly about $100 a ton, so about $5,000 for the purchase of the 50 tons that was requested. And so about a two to three week lead time in order to get it. It's even longer because of uh, the weather leading up to it, because it takes some time to make it um, with all the uh, components. But with that 50 ton, they charge a uh, very high delivery fit, $17 a ton, that's 850 bucks to deliver it. Now, 50 ton, I mean, anybody can order it in whatever increments that you want, but we have tandems here that can carry 20 ton, 
you know, still within the 80,000 GBR that we have for um, transporting it. So if we were to do that in-house and pick it up, Great Meadows is only 45 minutes roughly by car, let's say it's an hour by truck, it's two and a half hour round trip, between getting loaded, going there loaded and coming back two times, but if we reduced it to 40 ton, we'd be reducing it 10 ton, which is almost $1,000, plus saving $850 of a total of 1850 Do they dump all 50 tons at one time? No, no, no. Do they have to do it? No, it's $850 for the two trips. Do we come with a tri-axle that would be able to carry 25 tons per load? Or, Mr. Mayor, if we needed the amount of the infield mix, if we did 60 ton, and we still picked it up ourselves, theoretically, for the extra $150, because we're not paying the 850 fee, we get an extra 10 ton to do that. So, um, it, it was mentioned over to REC, um, they're not going to use the whole 50 ton, I would imagine, in that course of time, that you would have in the reserves end of it, so it's kind of a matter, do we want to save the 1850 now, utilize the 40 ton, or do we not want to do it at all and spend an extra 850, or do we want to increase it? And it seems like the, the beginning or the, 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 the lower number or the higher number is a savings no matter what. The middle number is not. So it's just something, <coughs> only because I was doing some research to help the POA, when I had come across it, speaking to the individual there that was handling the orders, um, and there's even a lesser fee because of, um, Municipality, but it's, it's peanuts, but five dollars a ton different. But I mean, I can get a tandem for a day, a whole day, for five hundred bucks, and it just seems a lot of money to have that go on uh, with that. So it's just a thought as far as new business to look into. We haven't picked it up yet. Um, Pete Tag, Pete Corp. They, they well, it, it, they receive our check, which is never cashed. And I think Mrs. Palmer can maybe validate that. Until the order has been processed and regularly picked up because the material is not completed yet. Again, because of the long winter, they've been delayed in what's going on and moving forward. So um, it, it is coming up. So I don't want you to think that there's going to be a, uh, you know, money's already been paid, they got to withdraw that, and money being paid back, whatever I have it. They just wouldn't um, pay for that amount when we pay that additional $150. So we would save money or get more bang for our buck for money if we would pick it up ourselves. We have a, a roll off of 40 yards, but it's only registered at 66,000, so we couldn't pick it up. A lot of material on one run. I looked into that as well. And, uh, okay, no. Tandem is probably the best, the best bet. So that's there. That was one order of new business. And I'll make this other one um, limited. The access roads for the mall are in, in horrible repair uh, that are there. There have been some complaints from some of the businesses that utilize those access and I think uh, a neighboring dentist they need because the jaws, the fillings out of their mouth from going through there. And I, I see our CFO actually agreeing with that. So I went into always down in the deeds in the vault and I had researched it and we found that uh, there is a plan from 1975 and a township actually has an easement for those uh, access roads off of County Road 664, which is now about it. So I think the original question was, who is the responsible party, the county or the township? But by way of the plan, which I can provide to you, I have it in the PDF, it shows that the township is the one responsible for that easement, which is the access for us. So if there's a way, maybe not the river, coming off of Mount Hobab, entering into, like let's say across the Mineral Springs, and you went across Mount Hobab and going into the mall. That access road is in really dire, dire need of some repair. So, do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. No, and Mr. Kelly, you you found documents, <coughs> printed documents that show the ownership of those easements. I, I do, and I actually found correspondence actually between the county and some individuals through the mall, uh, Rocky Valley Associates, too, um, questioning it and being redirected with it too. So. Um, I just want to see, A, if we can validate that, B, if there's something that we can do, because there has been a concern it's there. And it is, it is bad. Um, that's over there. So ironically, we're talking about things of recreation and asphalt and paving. Or city. There is a city. I'm sorry? There is a city. Yeah. Them. They don't even know that. They will pay. 
Who? The mall. The mall is not. Miss, the mall is one of them questioning it. That's been provided with the information. I saw some of the mall managers today were talking about it. And uh, they want that service to come and fill in. I don't know whether he was talking about access to the city, but they are in charge of the one back by party. Yeah, well, when you look at the plan, that, of course, the 1975 plan wouldn't have those things on there, those improvements of those areas. But the access roads well, going in. Only one, access one, two, three. Yeah. I only had the, the yeah. complaints about the access roads coming off of Mount of Avenue, yeah. uh, from, which is 664. So we have uh, a service on the Well, regardless of the service or not, it's a necessity to be Well, that would be something that you'd have to work in conjunction with them. Um, but it's just something I wanted to bring up. It was a question from numerous businesses up there. And um, I wasn't thinking that it was going to be something that the township had responsibility or potential uh, responsibility. But if we can just look at it and, and come up with a solution to address that, um, that would be great too. But you know, other than that, I don't have anyone to do. Thank you. Does anyone else have any new business? Uh, I have an item here. Um, water quality is something that's been in the news. Uh, the past few years at least um, for those who aren't aware uh, last year the state enacted the water quality accountability act on july 21st 2017 became effective on october 19th 2017 so later last year uh, it applies to water, public water systems uh, it requires the purveyors create and implement create and implement an asset management plan designed to inspect, maintain, repair, and renew its infrastructure, consistent with standards established by the American Water Works Association. Um, what might might get lost in looking at the, uh, the Act is that at the end, it states that purveyors regulated by the Act that have internet-connected control systems will also need to create cybersecurity programs and join in the New Jersey Cybersecurity and Communications Integration Zone. So uh, I don't know if the administration was aware of that. Uh, I'm planning to refer this to the IT committee uh, so that they can also take a look at that since they're looking at asset management plans and, and whatever cybersecurity plans the town has. But I will also make sure that the administration gets a copy of this as well so for their review. So I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. And, and thank you in advance to the IT committee for being able to look at things like this. The next item on my list is a little bit longer. There's some handouts here. One for everyone plus one for the mayor. One for you plus one for drafted here and going to read into the record as R1897 resolution to proceed with an investigation into allegations pertaining to the conduct of Township Attorney John Yatrafano Esquire and Township Business Administrator Adam Brewer. Whereas the Township of Rockaway, the Township is chartered under the Mayor Council form of government pursuant to the optional municipal charters law or Faulkner Act NJSA 40 colon 69 A 31, the Act. Whereas pursuant to the Act, Mayor Datchison appointed with the advice and consent of the Township Council, Yachifano and Perone Esquires as Township Attorney. Whereas in his role as Township Attorney, Mr. Yachifano and his law firm provide professional legal advice to both the Mayor and Township Council as circumstances dictate. And whereas in 2015, taxpayer Tucker Kelly filed a lawsuit caption. Tucker Kelly v. Michael Datchison, John Quinn, et al., in which case has since been removed to Passaic County, the litigation seeking to declare Mayor Michael Datchison and Councilman John Quinn ineligible to receive health benefits from the township. And whereas pursuant to Township Code 2-6.3a, the township attorney shall perform all legal services authorized by the mayor or council 
and required for the township pursuant to an annual agreement approved by resolution and whereas pursuant to the test set forth in Wisikowski v. Rezus, 1993, Mayor Datchison has a direct conflict of interest as it pertains to directing the actions of the township attorney as they pertain to the litigation because he is a party thereto. Whereas in light of Mayor Datchison's conflict in Township Code 2-6.3a, the township attorney must take direction from the township council matters pertaining to the litigation and is duty bound to follow all such directives. And whereas on November 24, 2015, township council voted to permit township, the township attorney to file a motion to permit the township to intervene in the litigation. And whereas on May 5, 2017, Carl Perone Esquire, who's Mr. Dr. Fano's law partner, filed a motion to intervene in the litigation in accordance with the township council's prior directive. Whereas the court subsequently denied Mr. Perone's motion to intervene, finding that the township had no interest in the litigation as it was between a taxpayer and several elected officials. And whereas on July 27, 2017, Mr. Perone filed an amicus brief in the litigation, which set forth arguments in support of the personal defense positions of Mayor Datchison and Councilman Quinn, and again sought to intervene in the litigation on behalf of the township. And whereas on January 11, 2018, the township council passed motion 2018-01, rescinding the 20, November 24, 2015 vote, authorizing the township attorney to intervene in the litigation and revoking the township attorney's authorization to intervene in any old or new matters known as Kelly v. Datchison et al. And whereas on April 13, 2018, Dr. Fano and Perone ignored and openly defied the direction of the township council by again filing an amicus brief in the litigation, wherein they advocated in support of the personal defense positions of Mayor Datchison and Councilman Quinn and sought to intervene in the litigation a third time. And whereas due to Mayor Datchison's conflict as it relates to the litigation and the fact that the township attorney must take direction from the township council, particularly and especially on matters where the mayor is in conflict, Mr. Yachifano, through his law partner, Mr. Perone, violated his duty as township attorney. And whereas on April 24, 2018, the township council voted to direct Mr. Yachifano to immediately withdraw his firm's amicus brief and cease any further involvement in the litigation, finding and declaring that because the court found that the township, that the township lacked any real interest in the litigation and further involvement, any further, any further involvement by Mr. Yachifano would be a blatant waste of taxpayer money. And whereas on May 4, 2018, Mr. Perone appeared in court and argued in support of the personal defense positions of Mayor Datchison and Councilman Quinn in clear and direct defiance of the township's prior directives to withdraw from the litigation and cease any further involvement. And whereas as justification for his disregard of the township council's clear direction via its motions and votes of January 11 and April 24, 2018, and his law partner's filing of the unsolicited amicus brief, Mr. Yachifano has stated that he was acting pursuant to direction that he received from the township business administrator, Adam Brewer. And whereas because the township business administrator is the head of the Department of Administration under the act, he is subordinate to and takes direction from the mayor in all matters, including those related to the litigation. And whereas under the act and the township code, Mr. Brewer has no independent authority to direct the township attorney as all such direction must come from the mayor or township council. And whereas because Mr. Brewer's position is subordinate to Mayor Datchison in all decisions of policy and direction regarding the township attorney, there exists a potential conflict of interest should it be found that either Mayor Datchison or business administrator Brewer provided direction to Mr. Yachifano regarding his involvement in the litigation. And whereas the township council is concerned that billing the township for preparation and filing of the amicus brief, as well as for court appearances, Yachifano and Perone have expended taxpayer money on behalf of Mayor Datchison and Councilman Quinn in defending their personal positions in the litigation, possibly at the direction of Mr. Brewer and or Mayor Datchison. And 
whereas for two, pursuant to NJSA 2C colon 220-8, the Township Council is further concerned should it be found that Yachtafano and Perone, Mayor Dashson, and or Mr. Brewer conspired to send, spend taxpayer monies on the personal legal defense of Mayor Dashson and Councilman Quinn, that a crime, including but not limited to theft of services, has been committed by exposing all said persons to criminal liability. And whereas pursuant to NJSA 40-69A-36C, the Township Council is authorized to conduct a legislative inquiry or investigation, and whereas pursuant to NJSA 40-69A-37A, the Township Council is authorized to require any municipal officer to prepare and submit sworn statements regarding his official duties and otherwise to investigate the conduct of any department, office, or agency of the municipal government. And whereas in light of the facts and circumstances set forth above, the Township Council finds and declares that it is compelled to act and that it is necessary to proceed with an investigation into the conduct of Mr. Yachtafano regarding his firm's continued involvement in the litigation in defiance of the clear direction of the Township Council. And whereas the, the Township Council finds and declares that it is also necessary to proceed with an investigation into the conduct of Mr. Brewer regarding his involvement in the litigation and any direction or guidance that he or Mayor Datchison may have provided to the Township Attorney regarding the litigation. And whereas due to the fact that a subject of the Township Council's investigation is Mr. Yachtafano, and pursuant to Municipal Council of the City of Newark versus James, 2005, the Township Council finds and declares that it is necessary to retain Conflicts Council to advise it during the course of the investigation. And whereas the Township Council has identified B.J. Parwar, Esquire of Pawar, Gilgallon, and Rudy LLC as possessing the requisite qualifications and experience in matters pertaining to municipal law and investigations. And whereas the Township Council desi desires to retain Mr. Pawar pursuant to the rates, expenses, and conditions applicable to all other Township Council and for a total sum not to exceed $17,500 to advise and represent it in the investigation per pertaining to Mr. Yachtafano and Mr. Brewer. And whereas the Township Council shall require Mr. Pawar to submit all requisite business entity disclosures to the Township Clerk prior to commencing the representation, now therefore be it resolved by the Township Council of the Township of Rockaway, County of Morris, State of New Jersey, as follows. One, that the aforesaid recitals be and hereby are incorporated herein as if repeated in full at length. Two, that the Township Council <clears throat> hereby forms a committee for the purposes of investigation of the conduct of Township Attorney John Yachtafano Esquire as it pertains to his past and continued involvement in the litigation in clear disregard of the direction of the Township Council and the conduct of Township Business Administrator Adam Brewer in directing Yachtafano and Perone to defend the positions of Mayor Datchison and Councilman Quinn at taxpayer expense. And that the members of said committee shall include Council President Jednak Chair, Council Vice President Abrahamson, Council Member Sackett, Council Member Smith as alternate, Council Member Palumbo as alternate. Number three, that the Township Council hereby authorizes the retention of B.J. and Pawar Esquire, of Pawar, Gilgallon, and Rudy, LLC, pursuant to the rates, expenses, and conditions applicable to all other Township Council for a total sum not to exceed $17,500, and subject to the submission of requisite <coughs> business entity disclosures to advise and represent the committee as conflicts counsel in the investigations of Mr. Yachtafano and Mr. Brewer. Number four, that the committee be and hereby is authorized to take any and all necessary and reasonable actions, including the issuance of subpoenas, to compel testimony or production of documents in furtherance of its investigation. I am moving this resolution that I have read into the record. Is there a second? No discussion? There's generally discussion after we have a motion and second. So, Moved by Jednak, seconded by Abrahamson. Is there any discussion with regard to this? Is there any discussion with regard to this 
resolution that I've read into the record. Move. Question. There's Mr. Friedlander. How long did it take to uh, draw up this resolution? Can I can I be told who drew it up? Mm -hmm. I wrote this resolution. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any? Is there any other discussion or questions? I wish I would have had this prior to just being handed out at the end of the meeting. Yep. So, as you as you have before you, as you have before you. In the timeline that I read, May 4th, Friday, May 4th, 2018, was the most recent appearance by Mr. Perrone uh, in court with regards to this case. Uh, so this is something I, I was working on since then, and in fact, didn't finish it till today. Table. Printed it before I came to this meeting. Table it. So, Table it. Is there any other discussion among the council with regard to this? Hearing no other discussion, Mr. Mr. Palumbo, do you have discussion? You hired a lawyer and you didn't even show it to me. I'll remind the show Sergeant, the Ar <clears throat> Sergeant Arms, please remind the member of the you. public who is having an outburst. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Palumbo. The first we are asked on the top of the second page. Court subsequently denied Mr. Burroughs' motion to intervene, finding that the township had no interest in the litigation. Can you stand on that? Yeah, so all these documents that have been filed with the court are public record. The township attorney has on three occasions made a motion to intervene. The township is not a party to this litigation by private parties. On at least three on at least three on at least three uh, instances the township attorney has actually sought to have the township become a party by filing motions to intervene and the judge has denied those the, at least one motion to intervene in the case Are the, is there any other discussion right there, the right there. Pay attention. can the public have a copy of your resolution oh, a copy of this is will be made available to the public following the meeting and will be in the minutes as well I will, I will remind it. Mr. Quinn, who has his hand up, that he uh, has a conflict in this matter, as does Mr. Kelly. Decided by who? I can still ask. You can vote. Uh, if you have a conflict, you should not be participating. I'm not participating. You are if you're asking a question. I'm asking a question. So, is there any other discussion? Is there any other discussion among the council? Yeah. Hearing none, clerk, please call the roll. Clerk, please call the roll. I'm first. Well, this is what I think of the resolution. No. Next on the agenda are reports of the council. Councilmember Quinn, your report. Councilmember Quinn, do you have a report? Yes, I do. Um, looking forward to getting the uh, basketball courts back open for the kids. Uh, second, um, the Unity Tour is going off. Uh, 
uh, this week and we have police that are part of this unity tour going down to Washington and they take their own time, raise their own money, do not get paid for this, but volunteer in doing this so that they can raise money for fallen officers that have been killed in action to help support their families during that time. So I'm very proud of our police department for participating in this. Thank you. Councilmember Friedland of your report. Um, yeah, this month I attended the uh, regional school board and uh, on a good note, they're uh, forming uh, another uh, pro specialty program, this one at Knowles for uh, Performing Arts Academy, which they say in a couple of years will generate uh, well over a million dollars. Uh, I also had the pleasure to go through their budget process with uh, wall to wall teachers because their uh, contract is up, was up last June and they haven't uh, settled on it yet. Uh, that's probably the, the best news. Uh, the bad news is uh, they had to use the 2% state cap because uh, various things. One of them is the insurance <coughs> went up 18.5% <coughs> and nowhere can they get it lowered. So due to that fact, uh, your regional part of the budget, the, your uh, taxes, will go up $117.31 based on a $337,285 assessment. We flipped with uh, Denver. Denver was higher the year before, and we were second. Now we're first, and Denver second. So that's that's the bad news. Uh, just basic stuff from the wards. Uh, Mr. Lutz is not here. I just want to thank him uh, for West Lakeshore. They're working with the engineers. The issue with the water flow is he's uh, been corrected. Uh, the medicos is on its way back to being uh, open. And also there was a resolution passed uh, by the Board of Adjustment for the uh, FedEx site plan approval on Green Pond. Looked it over a little bit and looks, looks pretty impressive what they're gonna do with, with that uh, section. And that's it. Councilmember Puzia. Um, on Monday I had a chance to attend on the, uh, been appointed by the council to the historical Society in Rockwood Township. Um, I have to say I'm a little bit of a history buff. I like that type of stuff. Uh, Monday they had a presentation here uh, in this room on the mining operation past and, and present in Rockway Township. Um, the room was packed. I didn't think there was going to be a big turnout, but there was. I didn't say you have a chance to stay for the whole entire presentation, but for what I was there for, um, they showed a film, they had some of the old miners. Um, that spoke about the conditions and how they uh, dealt with their uniforms and the lockers and all the mining conditions on the ground. I kind of found it, it was kind of neat to see because that's we'll put Rockway on the map. And uh, so I had a chance to attend that. We also, uh, myself and the mayor, uh, attended and Chief McFarland the uh, Leo Challenge at Morris Knowles. Um, that was last Sunday. Uh, Great event, uh, kids had a good time. It's almost like a mini Special Olympics, but at the local level, uh, kids had a blast. Uh, it's always fun to attend that. And then uh, I had, we had the Lift It Up program on, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, I misspoke. The uh, Leo Challenge was not this Sunday, it was prior Sunday. Um, this Sunday was the Lift It Up program. Uh, kids are a little older. Um, but it's basically the same type of venue was held at Morris Hills. It's a uh, competition of weightlifting that uh, the Sardis put on, along with other coaches. Mr. Palumbo was there um, to see the event. Uh, once again, to feel good, uh, definitely was a feel good uh, community event. Always good to you know, kind of keep your ground there for why you, you get involved in your community. And that's about it. Thank you. Councilmember Palumbo is next. Yeah, just echoing what uh, Councilman Guzio said about Lift It Up. Uh, it was great thing to see. 
Uh, you mentioned the Sardi, Swing the Sardi does a great job on that more volunteers. Actually, my son <coughs> volunteered here for all four years that he was in uh, high school, helping the kids. It's a really big event, so they do a nice job. Councilmember Smith. I was just going to make a report about the access roads to the mall that Mr. Kelly took care of it. Councilmember Sackett. Thank you. I had a couple items. Um, I want to read a, a statement into the record from Bob Collin, president of the Rockway Township Citizen Recreation Committee. To the Rockway Township Council members, it has come to the Rockway Township Citizen Recreation Committee attention. The funding we receive and that have been budgeted for improvements for Premier Peterson Field has been taken out of the budget for reasons unbeknownst to me or my 12 member committee. It has now come to the point that our insurance company has deemed both our tennis and basketball courts to be hazardous and thus must be closed immediately, not to reopen until the appropriate repairs are completed. I've also been advised there's been discussion that our Township Department of Public Works may take over this project in an effort to save the township undisclosed savings. I have no doubt the capabilities of DPW brings to the township. However, we have no confidence in their ability to perform effectively the changes and improvements that our committee has recommended for repairs and updates that are too widely played on courts in our township. We're all in favor of doing the job at a reasonable cost. Would that cost include the projects be done by qualified contractors that go through a typical bidding process? These courts are closed now due to the incompetence of several council members who care only about themselves and the power they currently have to wreak havoc upon the children and families of the township are called home for 30 years. I've seen the good, the bad, and now the ugly of the township. The direction the majority of our council members have chosen to take on the families and children of our fine community has come to a point where immediate action must be taking place to inform our community of blatant disrespect you have for the recreation community, community with over, that he has over 7,000 emails for us to reach out and inform them on your direction. I've chosen to take on our community. We'll be reaching out to each and every family member over the 25 sports programs we have in our sending district. We have elections coming up, and committee will not be sitting by idle as the township government tries their best to disconnect themselves from the most important asset we have in the town, our children. From minority council members that are fighting the good fight for our community and the children we have been supporting, we will continue to support no matter the obstacles we must overcome. Thank you. We as a committee will continue to do our best in providing our children and young adults with the fields, courts, and recreational facilities they derive to have and at a reasonable cost to us and all hard work and taxpayers possible to put aside. I look forward to hearing back from council members in the coming days on your plans to support our community and getting back to some kind of normalcy once and for all. Yours in Recreation, Bob Common, President, Rockway Township Citizen Recreation Committee. Council members, I want to discuss. On April 27th, I attended the Rockway Chamber of Commerce meeting. Um, there was a pres great presentation put on by the Rotary Club of Rockway and all they do for the community. I did, I did talk to them afterwards and uh, a lot of stuff they do is really good. The last thing they seem to be doing is for Rockway Borough. So I did, I did say, you know, we'd like to try to get some more stuff for the township. They seem to, a lot of their stuff seems to be focused on the borough. Um, so one thing I spoke about. I was also at the Rise Up Rockaway Speed, Sweet Peace Baking Contest on Sunday, April 29th at the First Presbyterian Church. It was well attended by a lot of Rockaway Township residents. It was great to see a lot of kids who had, uh, had their own sweet treats for sale, and it was a really good fundraiser and a really good day. I um, also was at the Citizen Rec Committee meeting on Tuesday, May 1st, and the committee is working really hard on improving the programs in town. and. Um, Looking forward to ways to help improve recreation, make things better for our kids. Uh, this past Sunday, I attended the Israel Day, Israel Day celebration at Dash Shalom in Parsippany. It was attended by Rabbi Paki from the White Middle Temple and many members from the White Middle Temple as well. Mayor Soriano from Parsippany is also there to help celebrate. And lastly, I just want to wish all the great mothers and wives out there a very happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Next is Councilmember Kelly. Uh, I got a couple of things. Um, on Saturday, I attended the Spring Cleanup Day uh, over at Park Slate. I believe uh, my friend in there is Thunder, but he attended it, participating in that in another location. Um, there were three locations that took place 
Uh, there was Apple Pond, there was Copeland School, as well as Parks Lake. And collectively between all of those places, it was uh, 700 pounds that was uh, pulled out of other areas, bagged, and going to be recycled. That was even a toilet that was found in Apple Pond. Um, amazing. Um, the volunteers that participated in that, there was about 63 that came, uh, signed an affidavit, and uh, went out clean. Got provided a vest, an actual picker tool, and uh, my daughter was with me, who was six years old, and now is infatuated with the swan. The swan is her new best friend over there, and uh, it was a clean environment for the uh, animals. Um, the other thing I had going by, visiting Telcon a couple of times, the Fort Fascia House. I don't know if anybody's been down here from the addition of putting on here. It is wild. I gotta tell you, I mean, the craftsmanship of some of the masons there with the stoneworks they're doing, it's it's uh, it's amazing. If you're into that kind of stuff, I am into that. I mean, Fusio is very historically involved. Um, even in the construction end of it, then, I think they're smarter then with construction than we are now, with limited tools and all brain. It is uh, something to look at. Um, Sweeper was out again. Another good sign that spring is here. Um, also, uh, I am looking forward um, to come up with a solution quickly, Mr. Mayor, with the basket courts. Um, some kind of remediate what we have going on, and if there is something that I can help in order to expedite that, um, making that move forward, please let me know. And uh, Mr. Sack, it's a little thunder for me. I want to wish all the mothers out there uh, a happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Council Vice President Abraham. Uh, I wanted to thank the DPW staff for installing the council mailboxes that are uh, just outside the door here. Uh, please note for the record that Councilmember Kelly left the meeting at 9.59 p.m. Um, all the council members now have keys to their mailboxes uh, so that they can pick up their mail here after hours using their key cards to get into this portion of the building. Please note that at 10 p.m., Council uh, Vice President Abrahamson left the meeting. Uh, I also attended a recent Rockaway Area Chamber event, uh, an evening event uh, just before the, the one that uh, Councilmember Sackett mentioned, uh, and happy Mother's Day to all who celebrate. Next is the Mayor. Oh, thank you. Yeah, happy Mother's Day to everybody. I guess uh, I really know every time I need to come. So, I just want to wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day, and, you know, we had a discussion here, I thought we were going ahead, and, agreement with the town and then to talk about we can't get anything done and then they call this <laughs> they, they call this how can uh, I don't know yeah. how, how can we we work together when they keep pulling this stuff I don't understand how can put them in the face and try to have a conversation with them this is why the, rec the CRC didn't want to present a plan, because it's always negative, it's always fighting. Um, this, this, is, I, this is great. I, I really like this stuff. This is, this is slander, this is liable to call me a criminal, which three of them on there already did over the past few years. Uh, I can't really say much anymore because, you know, it's litigation now. But know this, Eric Harrison is our JIP attorney. They represented us. Mr. Perone and Mr. Yacopano represented the town. Now, let me explain this a little bit different to you, okay? And I'm probably gonna get kicked here because I shouldn't get into this. But should we lose this lawsuit? Yeah. I can sue the town because the town told me for the last 20 years that I can take benefits. So now how can I sue myself? I would have to sue the town. So that is why Perone and Yacopano are defending the town. Because they're defending the town's liability for telling us and telling all the past members, the past mayors, that they can take the benefits. And I'm only taking something that I was told I can take. Nothing illegal here, nothing out of the ordinary. 
Okay, so that's the case. It's at the judge's decision now. I can't say much more. And believe me, I have done everything that I needed to do for this town for the last 20 years. And the town is best interest in heart. And I apologize for this because this is just making our town stay in the news looking ugly and bringing our property values down because who wants to move to a town that's in this disarray yeah. <laughs> township attorney is next yeah initially i had no i'm carl perone I'm, uh, I'm not mr yachty final i don't think any of you have seen me more than once uh, or twice uh, not, not at, at no time this year um I, I'm not sure that this should have been done in the public session. I'll let the judge finally address that. I'm talking about the resolution that was passed uh, and under new business. Uh, I, I heard a comment or a question from Mr. Palumba request re regarding the, the first paragraph on the second page. Well, that, that paragraph couldn't be further than accurate. I don't know if that affected your vote, but I'm telling you now your vote was based on factual information that's totally incorrect. Please. It says, whereas the court subsequently denied Mr. Perone's motion to intervene, finding that the township had no interest in the litigation as it was between the taxpayer and several elected officials, no court ever found that. And no court ever denied our motion to intervene except when Mr. Kelly's original case was denied or dismissed in Morris County, and our and our notice to intervene became moot. So it was never denied for any reason other than the fact that the, the case was dismissed, so the motion was moot, so the court didn't go forward with it. Okay. So if if you want to change your vote, that's up to you. Or if you want to reconsider or have more com com uh, conversation about it, that's up to you. But if that was your reason for voting yes, then the factual basis is wrong. Well, we need an attorney review on all resolutions. Well, uh, <laughs> also, uh, what I did is I pulled up, I pulled up my It would absolutely not be appropriate for the attorney to review a resolution in which they are the subject of the investigation. Yes, yes. Attorney, do you have any, do you have any further remarks? In addition, uh, I just pulled up my brief that I, um, I have a copy of because I sent it to my secretary at one point. And I just wanted, I wanted to have the, uh, the uh, put on a record that uh, we supplied a memorandum, as was indicated, that's accurate. We, 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 we supplied the memorandum at the direction of the administration. And in our brief, what I say to the court is we have, uh, because there's some allegation that we're, that we're somehow representing the interests of Mayor Datchison or Councilman Quinn, and I want, I want you to know, and I, I, I'm, assume, I'm assuming you never read my brief, uh, we assert that the township has a significant interest in addressing the following. A, defending the propriety of the decision made by Gregory Poff, which forms the legal and factual basis for the township's decision not to sue the proposed defendants. B, defending the propriety of the actions of the township's administrative staff, who process the proposed defendants' applications for health benefits and administer the implementation of those benefits. And C, advancing the impropriety of requiring the township to file a legal action pursuant to NJSA 2815-18. We did not in any way pr present or promote to the court the interests of anyone or any, per or any person involved other than the, the township of, of, Rock of Rockaway or any individual who worked as part of the administration in the context of providing benefits to anyone in the township during that time frame. That's, so whatever you've said relative to whatever conclusions you've drawn are also inaccurate. So this most, this resolution is based on factual information that is not fact. It's absolutely incorrect. Uh, in addition, the resolution recites a, uh, a criminal statute in public. Uh, um, if you had, I hope you had counsel talking to you about this because that is, that's liable per se. Okay, so if in fact you got counsel talking to you, you better talk to a different counsel. Uh, with respect to the, the, uh, the propriety of doing this in open session, like I said, I'll let Mr. Yashifano address this. 
uh, it's based, what this is based on is are false factual premises. I'm sorry to say that because I'm not a confrontational person. I came here, like I said, with the, with the intention of just assisting wherever I could. Uh, and I'm sorry that I'm saddled with the responsibility of responding. I'll go through it and I'm sure there are other things that are wrong about it relative <laughs> to the facts and allegations that have been made in it. And I submit to you that um, I'm not even sure of the propriety of the, of the resolution uh, that is based upon unfounded facts, but we'll address that from the witness standpoint at some point. The business administrator is back. Mr. Brewer. I have no report, Council President. Do any of the other administration department heads here have a report? I don't have a report. Okay. I will give two further facts. Um, the fact is that on two occasions, this governing body has taken this duly elected governing body has has taken <coughs> votes directing the township attorney and subsequent to both of those occasions the township attorney has ignored the, that direction the fact is that the township attorney has placed himself in this position by willfully defying the will of a duly elected council the council has no choice but to take this action lest it become complicit in the situation next on the agenda number 15 open to the public Ordinance 2-5.14 requires that any comments or questions made during the public portion of a council meeting must be addressed to the council as a whole and not any individual council member. The failure to comply with this ordinance may result in the termination of any further opportunity to address the council at that session. All speakers must first be recognized by the council president before speaking. All comments are to be directed to the entire council as a whole, not any not to any individual members speakers have five minutes <coughs> each to speak per township code at the conclusion of five minutes an alarm will sound indicating that the speaker's time has expired and the individual speaking is expected to immediately relinquish the microphone so that the next individual may speak failure to adhere to these rules will result in the council president using gavel to reinforce adherence to these rules and when individual speaking time has expired if at any time a speaker ignores the gavel or refuses to relinquish the microphone, the sergeant at arms is directed to assist the individual in relinquishing the microphone and remove the individual from the meeting as necessary. First on the list is Dave Press. Please state your name and address for the record. Dave Press, 71 Oakland Avenue. Um, I totally changed what I was going to say. I threw those things out because you, you gave me so much ammunition tonight. There, there's no justification for this council to make up rules as you go along. Trying to have residents removed from this room simply because you don't like what they're saying is inexcusable. It's like the mentality of threatening to take your bat and ball and go home. That's something that's done by children. That's exactly how to describe the way this council acts, like children. Now moving on to the, the issue with the basketball courts and courts. If you think a Band-Aid is, is a good idea, you need a legal help and a lot of other things because once the insurance company knows about this i mean you can turn a blind eye to it saying we didn't know that because we didn't have a report once the insurance company knows about this and they tell you what you have to do and you don't do it they're well within the rights to deny coverage mm -hmm. and they cancel your policy and then then guess what guess who pays for it the taxpayers once again you're screwing this over okay the last thing I want to say, well, there's more, but the last thing I want to say is I'm addressing this to the entire council as per the rules, but you should all, if you haven't already, you should all uh, congratulate three of your members who apparently graduated law school. So. <laughs> Thank you for your comments. Next on the list is Ray Tahan. Please state your name and address for the record. Raymond Tahan, 957 Green Pond Road, Rockaway. The reason I'm standing before you tonight is I'm rather concerned about what was said on, at the April 24th council meeting by Council Vice President Ms. Abrahamson, explaining why she voted in favor of this budget. She also stated that she had not looked at the last two budgets but voted no on those budgets, and she provided us with a very lame excuse as to why she did not. <clears throat> she explained that the last three budgets had provided for positions in the police department that went unfilled. She then stated that we, the taxpayers, paid for that service that went unfilled, stating on the record 
you paid for a service you didn't get for over two years. And then went on to say, citizens are generally increasingly disconnected from public budgets that impact their pocketbooks and their daily lives. <coughs> well, it looks like our council vice president is more disconnected than anyone when it comes to budgets. <coughs> By her statements, she proved to all of us that she absolutely has no understanding of how a budget works. And that it is within <coughs> and it is within this lack of understanding that she is voting on issues critical to our township. The fact is that when money is in a budget for a specific purpose and not used for that single specific purpose, it does not get wasted as Ms. Abrahamson incorrectly believes. In reality, we the taxpayers did not pay for any service that went unfilled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The money stayed in the budget as a surplus and was not wasted or spent. Therefore, I believe that as Ms. Abrahamson has been on this council for a few years and is the council vice president, yet she has still not familiarized herself with basic matters. <clears throat> she should resign from the council. Yes. <laughs> yes. For your comments next on the list is joy weinreich please say your name and address for the record <clears throat> joy weinreich seven north brookside drive uh, as a chairperson of the festival day committee of white meadow lake i'm here this evening to invite you all to please attend our festivities the council uh, we have a parade, since many of you are new, on Sunday mornings, starting at 11 o'clock at Hibernia and Calumet. We would like you all to participate, the administration as well, and everybody in the audience, please, you all come. Thank you. July 15th, Sunday. Eleven a.m. Next on the list is Gloria Stahl. Please state your name and address for the record. Gloria Stahl, three one one zero Franklin Line, Rockaway. Um, I'm here to just invite everyone or confirm that you already got notice of our Memorial Day service. Um, at Fox Hills. It'll be on Sunday, May 27th. Um, the mayor and all the council are invited. Um, we meet at the flagpole at 10 a.m. and after that it's followed by um, a music uh, program and refreshments in our clubhouse. So we hope to see all of you there. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next on the list is Glenn Katz. Please state your name and address for the record. Good evening. Uh, Glenn Katz, 47 West Lake Shore Drive. Mr. Katz, how do you spell your last name? K-A-T-Z. K-A-T-Z? Yes, thank you. Let's get some notes here. Um, I'm just talking on the basketball courts again, just to tell you who I am and my involvement. I've been involved in Rockaway Athletics for 15 years. Um, I am on baseball board. I coach baseball. I am the co-chair of the Athletics Committee in uh, White Meadow Lake, but more importantly, I have five boys that participate in our recreation programs here, and uh, those of you who know me, I will do anything for the kids in Rockaway Township. Um, and uh, today the kids took a loss, and that bothers me, and I hope it bothers you because this is a uh, good notice on how we feel. Um, in those 15 years, I've seen our facilities deteriorate, and it's troubling. Um, I spend four or five nights a week at Peterson Field. I was coaching a game the other night, and uh, I looked down at the basketball courts, and there were 50 kids there. And in my eyes, in nowadays, that is something great to see. Kids don't just play anymore. And we took that away from them. Okay, we took that away from them today. 
Um, so, uh, as a parent, what do I tell my kids? You can't play. You can't play the basketball courts anymore. Some of you are parents here. I'm sure. Okay. This is a problem. What do I tell my 10-year-old? Sorry, buddy. Can't play there anymore. Right? And it's troubling, okay? Um, and the biggest thing here, the only people that don't have a voice are our kids. And they're the ones suffering, okay? So basically why I'm here tonight is to tell you, please, I plead to you, put your differences aside and think about our children. Don't think about yourselves, think about our children, because they are the only ones that are suffering tonight. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Next on the list is Jackie Bader. Please state your name and address for the record. Jacqueline Bader, 129 Richard Line Road. Um, first on, uh, I wanna uh, bring up a happy note, as um, uh, Councilman Quinn did. Tomorrow morning, the Police Unity Tour leaves from East Hanover Target on Route 10 if anyone wants to be at the send-off. It is an amazing event. They have members from all over North Jersey, it goes to South Jersey a little bit, some New York members, um, who ride for those who died. Um, they, they drive for four days. They'll be in D.C. Um, you know, on Saturday. They'll arrive. Um, we have the three members is Mike Bader, Greg Albert and Kevin Shea. Um, they all will be there the entire trip. Um, they ride bicycles, support, as well as the motor. Um, they raise almost $2,000 a person on their own with no help. It is something they believe in. Um, it, it is a wonderful thing if you guys, if anyone could go to the send off tomorrow, or if you ever want to go down to DC for the actual everyone riding in, they have thousands and thousands of police officers, family members of members who have died in the line of duty, um, humans as well as canines. They have all their member, all their names go up on the walls. It's, it's a, it, it makes you reevaluate things, which I'm not gonna lie, some of these council members need. <laughs> um, so that's, that's tomorrow. Um, they send off as 9.30 tomorrow morning at Target on Route 10 in East Hanover. Um, on a negative note, I still have, I, I hate to bring this up, but poor Adam resigned. I mentioned it on Facebook. I was not the first person to mention it on Facebook, but it was insinuated that I got information prior to other people. It was not only published in a newsletter that was posted and sponsored through multiple most, um, council people, but then they gave it to newspapers of this, um, it looked like online portions. Um, it was not me. I wanna clarify the record. It was not me who posted it first. I would really re uh, like an apology and a retraction because it's rude to insinuate that I got information from other sources. It, I have timestamps on everything. It's all Facebook. And if maybe somebody did a little bit of information backwards, they would have known. It's it, it's not fair to me to be insinuated in this face, chef, this fashion. I again would it like an apology. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Next on the list is Katie Platts. Please state your name and address for the record. I'm not talking yet. Don't start it. <laughs> Katie Platts, Tuval Holloway. This is completely the problem. Council, everybody that voted for this, you just spent $17,500 to conduct an investigation of your own attorney and your own lawyer. And you know what? I am a lawyer. And you know what? I do criminal law. And the fact that you even made an allegation that they're criminals is ridiculous. Everything you do seems to seem like you want to be a lawyer. You're not. You don't get it. And I think this is hugely problematic. But what I'm here to say tonight is that we sat here for an hour and a half and what did you say? You said, I won't promise a dollar without a plan. Where's my plan? <laughs> where's, where's the paperwork? And then you were to council with this last minute? What's your plan? Somehow or another, you hired a lawyer. You retained a lawyer to conduct your 
nonsense investigation. But oops, couldn't have given this to any of the council or the public before you demanded a vote? How is that possible? Why do you care more about your personal vendettas and your problems with the mayor and this lawsuit than you do about our kids? You guys have to <laughs> to hire a lawyer. You just you just approved it, but you just didn't agree to pay a single dollar. I stood here weeks ago and said, you know what, please reconsider your cuts to Peterson. Our fields are terrible. Our courts are awful. There's the recording. The guy keeps playing it. You've seen it. You were here. And you said, oh, thank you so much for your comment. And then you voted to cut $100,000 to Peterson. Well, guess what that decision brought you? It brought you humiliation and embarrassment because now they're literally closed. What are we, in inner city? Are we in abandoned courts in inner city? You care about taxes? You give a, do you care at all about our property values? No! My own. We cannot sell a house and, and offer great facilities when you know what? They drive by them, they're literally closed. My kids can use them. Lisa Salberg, 10 Bergen Hill, Rockaway. I'm going to take a second because what was just said up here was poetry to me. Yes. It was beautiful. It conveys the thoughts of everybody in this room, pretty much. And on that note, a moment of silence. So I want to go backwards and then we'll go forward. I want to address the embarrassment that was last council meeting. We spent 20 minutes talking on a non-agenda item with a council person and a member of the audience without being recognized by the chair in a conversation that went back and forth for 
over 20 minutes and was non-productive, should have been a private meeting, not a public meeting because it wasn't on the agenda. Yet, the rules of this council seem to kind of wax and wane with the, I don't know, wind. But what happened next was our town attorney wanted to convey some thoughts to the town council and to those in the audience. And he was shut down. He was not allowed to speak. When the audience member and a council member had a very long dialogue of 20 minutes, our town council, was to, or town attorney was told he could not speak and share his thoughts. And I was going to say this at the last meeting, but yet again for the second time this year, I was threatened with being bodily removed from the meeting, so I didn't get a chance to say it. But I think the town needs to understand what's really going on between the council president and the town attorney. It is very clear, and it's been out and about in the uh, gossip columns, you'll say, that there is a clear agenda to replace him with John Inglesino. The former oh! mayor with ties to Bronx Sarkine, Never. who we know how that ended for the people of Box Hills and the people of this town. So I don't think it's a really wise idea to not let your town attorney speak. And now to what happened tonight. Dear Lord, dear Lord, um, if you really want to be attorneys, you should probably go to law school before trying to write up legal documents that are probably going to end up town in court and probably with some defamation suits from the way I'm looking at things at this point. So I want to go to something else that every council member here needs to really, really do the research on as well as every resident in Rockaway Township. I want you to visit a website. It's called Exposed by CMD. This site explains the motive, strategies, and <laughs> tactics of an, a group that is attempting to infiltrate our community, Americans for Prosperity, funded by the Koch brothers, Koch brothers, whatever you want to call them. Their agenda is very simple. Anti-establishment, ruin the unions, anti-union, anti-public education, anti-environment, supports those candidates who seek to remove Medicare and Medicaid, and they have a very questionable LGBT policy. Their state lobbyist has in fact said mislead, sent misleading information to members of the Rockway Township Teachers Association. And that information is still readily available. Why is this important? Because this dirty sandbox called Americans for Prosperity lives right here. Their state representative lives here with one of our council members. And if you really want to know what's going on, it's all about them. They want to disrupt and destroy municipal government to control it. It's very sad. It's not a democracy. So if you have a conflict of interest with such an establishment, watch out, the clock's going to run out, Jeremy. I would encourage you to start with the best move, and that is the resignation of Council President Chevniak. Thank you for your comment. Next on the list. Next on the list is Frank Jekyll. Please state your name and address for the record. Next on the list is Pat Degnan. Please state your name and address to the, for the record. Pat Degnan, 88 Value Drive. On a lighter note, I'd like to invite the council and the administration to the White Meadow Lake Fire Company number no. fives. Uh, sunrise service which will be held Monday May 28th at 6 a.m. in the morning but we promise to give you breakfast after the ceremony uh, I know it's early in the morning but it's a beautiful beautiful ceremony and it really is a way to honor those who have given their lives for us um, my other note is something that I wrote up this afternoon after reading the minutes um, which are now published online uh, during the January 2nd, 2018 uh, reorganization um, minutes, um, as recorded in the minutes, a member of the public asked a question about her concerns about changing township attorneys and was told by the council that this was a mayor's appointment. It has been obvious since that meeting that even though this attorney was appointed by the mayor, according to the township rules that some members of this council 
are refusing to allow the attorney to do his job since his appointment. Thank you for your comment. Next on the list is Stacy Gray. Please state your name and address for the record. My time didn't start yet, correct? It starts once you give your name and address. Stacy Gregg, 40 Sunrise Road, Wharton, New Jersey. For the people who don't know, that's really rock away. Okay. Um, boy, I was the last one on your little writing list that you put out there. Um, it's wrong, the way you're running this the way this council together, the way you're all running this is wrong. It's an embarrassment and I'm concerned about my home. It concerned about my neighbor's home. I'm concerned about the people who want to move into Rockaway at some time not in the future, not knowing what they're moving into. This is a shame. You should all be ashamed of what is going on for the last, I guess since January. It's an embarrassment. I'm scared for my largest investment, which is my home. I have some other investment properties. I'm embarrassed of the conflict of interest when you have people who are, I, I mean, fighting at each other every single step of the way with conflicts representing values that Rockaway Township and most of the United States does not have. We are a welcoming country. We welcome gays, we welcome immigrants, we welcome people into Rockaway Township. We are a diverse township. This council is not diverse. And what I, was, what I just found out tonight from Lisa's reading about Americans for Prosperity is very frightening to me. This is not a fascist country. This is not a dictator graveling, gaveling, banging, society that I live in, and I won't take it. And we have an Erin Brockovich in our midst, and I want to applaud her. I, you are my new hero. You're my lawyer any day. You're my Erin Brockovich girl. You stand on a chair for me and everybody else like me that isn't getting up. And you need to drink the water. You get your butts down to that tennis court tomorrow and you fix it. Because you have, right now, Anybody that hears this thing tonight can send their kid over there and get a lawsuit and we're going to pay big dollars because some moron calls up and you're having, who calls the insurance company on yourselves? Really? <laughs> what kind of idiots is on my council? I don't know who it was up here. But this is not in the interest of my taxes which are way too high. I don't even have, I don't have um, septic on my street. What's going on with that? I can't even get to the real problems that I want to come up here and talk about. In the next 24 hours, you get that field, you get that damn thing fixed. Enough. Or put up a, a, a hazard sign or something. You put us all at liability. This is a great neighborhood. I want to be a grandmother one day in this neighborhood if my kids have, if my kids, have kids. This is a shame. And I heard tonight two people asked to be stepped down. I want four of you to sit down. Enough is enough. You need to leave, you need to give your resignation. You're not in it for the greater good of the community. It's obvious to everybody that is here tonight listening. I hope you go and you listen to the tape and you hear how you sound and what you voted on and what you've done to our community. And signage, okay, I got another thing on here. Uh, how long is it before we're gonna have signs up like every other municipality in New Jersey? Welcome to Montclair, welcome to Maplewood, welcome to here. There's no presence of Rockaway Township. We have a, a shared pond. Thank you for finally putting up a sign at the end of um, when you get off Route 80 where it says the Denville Line Company and now has a sign next to it, Rockaway Township. How many years did that take? I went to one of your, council, uh, your chamber meetings with you. We had a great presentation. Did you spend money on that? No. With no plan or anything else, you spent $17,500 of my taxpayer, my tax paid money for garbage. I want things fixed in my town. I don't want to be an embarrassment. I want to be able to sell my property when I need to sell it and move up to a bigger house 
but I don't get anything over 10,000 deductible. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The public will now close the open to the public. Is there a motion to adjourn? Is there a question? We have a motion from Council Member Abrahamson. Is there a second? When? Seconded by Kelly. Clerk, please call the roll. Yes. 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 Nine yes, zero no, zero abstentions. Meeting adjourned.